All right, folks, the sales charts are in for Japan. The media create sales from week 29 to 2018 from July 16th through July 22nd. And the Nintendo Switch owns the top seven spots in the chart. Nintendo-based systems actually, with games, own the top 13 spots. Or top 12, sorry, top 12 spots on the chart. And what I find interesting about this is that last week's prior number one game, Octopath Traveler, that moved, oh, 110,000 units or so during its launch week had a massive drop-off, an 80% drop-off in the second week of sales down to 22,438, which puts it at the number two spot. Now, what we have heard is that Octopath Traveler sold through 90% of its initial launch stock, and we heard they were not going to be able to restock the game fully in Japan, well, guess what, until August. So a drop off in week two, I suppose was suspected because they only had so many copies left out there to even buy. And while they did put out a mini restock of it during the second week, we heard that restock was practically sold out before the stores even opened. So yeah, I expect maybe even another drop off in week three until they can get a bigger, you know, 100,000 unit style restock in sometime in August. And at that point, we might see Octopath Traveler get a massive bump in sales. I, I would hate to see this game drop off a cliff just because people can't buy it. At this point, it has sold 132,550 units in Japan, and we would like to see it, you know, continue to climb because I I'm not going to say Octopath Traveler is perfect. I haven't made a video about it yet. I, I want to make a video about it soon. I'm not going to say Octopath Traveler is perfect, but games like this need to, you know, the demand for these games needs to be met. That way, developers like Square Enix and, and even Nintendo themselves can see the clear demand for these kind of games that the industry seems to have thrown out and said we don't want. So, yes, let's get a restock. Let's see what this game can really sell. That being said, let's go over the rest of the charts here. So what debuted at number one was also a game for Nintendo Switch by Bandai Namco called Teiko no Tetsujin Drum and Fun. Uh, it debuted with 69,984 units at the number one spot. Uh, pretty good debut for that game. At number three, Splatoon 2 is holding strong. Uh, it showed a 7% growth week on week at 21,913 units. For those wondering, there are 2,469,695 Splatoon 2 <laughs> um, copies sold in Japan. At the number four spot is Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, which did see a 51% drop. Pretty typical. Uh, it dropped down to 20,547 in its second week for a grand total of 62,399. At number five, we have Mario Tennis Aces, which saw a 10% drop uh, to 19,709, giving it a grand total of 247,161 units. At number six, we have the Nintendo Switch version of Minecraft physical copies, 16,265 sold. That's an 8% growth week on week for a total of 138,051 units. At the number 7 spot, it was also at the number 7 spot last week, just holding, you know, holding steady, is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. It sold 13,435, which is an 18% bump. So it is now sitting at 1,641,109 units. At the number 8 spot is Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon continuing to chug along. Saw 6% growth week on week at 7,554 units to sell 1,676,067 units. At the number 9 spot is Captain Toad Treasure Tracker for the 3DS uh, that saw a 51% drop off as well just like the Switch version down to 7188 to move 21746 does this mean the 3DS is dead 3DS might be dead in Japan <laughs> anyways at the number 10 spot is Breath of the Wild a launch game still sitting in the top 10 was at number 10 last week holds fast at number 10 this week 8% bump in sales to 7,173 for a grand total of 1,050,891. Man, best-selling game of all time for Zelda in, in, in Japan. That was, wow. Uh, anyways, at number 11, we have Kirby Star Allies. Uh, they sold. Uh, it's actually saw a 4% bump, bump in sales, and it sold 6,407 units last week for a grand total of 566,171. Uh, Super Mario Odyssey is sitting at number 12. 
Uh, and that sold 5,695 units, a 14% growth for a grand total of 1,772,133 units. Uh, then we have a uh, PlayStation 4 titles that kind of break up the streak of Nintendo games. And then it just goes right back to the Nintendo games all over again after Detroit became human. Uh, at number 14, we have Animal Crossing New Leaf. Uh, welcome Amiibo uh, edition, apparently. It uh, sold 4,354 for a grand total of 425,839. Uh, at number 15, we saw Nintendo Labo Toy Com 1. This is actually a big jump because it was at number 21 the week prior. Uh, somehow must have got some sort of sales bump and is now at number 15. The variety kit is the most popular of the Nintendo Labo Toy Cons. Uh, it sold 3,842 units for a grand total of 205,809. At number 16, we have Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, it saw a 7% drop-off uh, to 3,378 for a grand total of 193,709. Probably going to move, you know, between the 220, 230 uh, in terms of grand total uh, once they're done selling that. Uh, followed by a slew of PlayStation 4 games. You got, you know, at number 17, 18, and 19 are three different PlayStation 4 games. And then it rounds out at number 20 with Mario Kart 7 for Nintendo 3DS. Moving 2,614. Uh, if you're actually wondering how well Mario Kart 7 sold on 3DS in Japan, it moved 2,903,441 units. So nearly 3 million. Very impressive indeed. Uh, for If you didn't understand that, there are 12 Nintendo Switch games in the top 20 for 3DS for PlayStation 4. All right. So next up, uh, we also get a hardware update for sales. Sales grew again. So last week, we saw sales grow by about 7,000 units to move to 50,239 for Nintendo Switch. This week, we saw sales grow to 53,745. Technically, this is about 45,000 less than at the same week last year, but I don't know. We didn't have a major release, so like a major release is going to bump sales. I do think uh, what's nice is that for two weeks in a row, there's been two um, desired games releasing on Switch, and if this trend keeps continuing, I think that 53,000 number is just going to continue to grow every single week. We could be back over 100,000 units before the holidays. That would be that would be special, especially if it happens before Pokemon and before uh, Super Smash Bros. is here. Anyways, uh, year to date, it has sold 1,365,000 units, 361 at the end there. Uh, that is a little bit ahead of last year's pace, although it's of note, obviously, last year didn't launch till March, so there's a couple extra months of data in there for Switch. Uh, lifetime to date in Japan. This is just Japan. We're at about a year and a half or so of this being on the market. Nintendo Switch has sold 4,677,980 units. Uh, the PlayStation 4, for reference, is about uh, 2.3 million uh, ahead of that. So Nintendo very well could catch and overtake the PlayStation 4 um, within a year at, at this current rate. And who really knows uh, if and when it will uh, catch uh, the 3DS, which, you know, 24 million units, just cra crazy numbers. Uh, it's definitely going to pass the Vita lifetime sales, maybe even before the end of the year. And, uh, well, does anyone even pay attention to Xbox? It is notable, though, that Xbox did see a bump in uh, sales this week, a pretty big bump. They sold 79 units last week to 765. So... That's that's one of the biggest growth periods I've actually seen for Xbox. It almost moved a thousand units. That's wow, good for them. Um, anyways, uh, 3DS itself, the total 3DS family of systems sold 11,577, which was a 4,000 increase. I'm not sure why there was an increase. I don't recall any major 3DS games coming out, but it's only 4,000 units, about the same increase that Switch got. So. There you go. Uh, PlayStation 4 was obviously at number two. Uh, it saw a little bit of growth as well, uh, going from 17.5 17 thousand the week before to 20,309. So there you go. Sales on the whole seem to be up just across the board. Even PlayStation Vita had 100 more, you know, 165 more units sold than the prior week. So all very interesting stuff. What does it mean? Not a whole lot. <laughs> um, it's just Japan. But it does mean the Switch is continuing to at least maintain its momentum. The big thing, I, I feel like, for Nintendo, at least in, until they get some really big, heavy-hitting titles out, like Pokemon and Smash or, dare I say, an Animal Crossing game, Animal Crossing is, like, still, like, an offshoot of it is selling still well on, on 3DS. Like, it, 
I what? Anyways, I don't even know if Japan could handle a, a, a year that has Pokemon Smash and Animal Crossing in it. I I don't even know if their uh, their consumer base can handle that. That it would be maybe a record breaking sales year for Switch. But uh, the interesting thing here is that Switch's momentum is not slowing down. It is consistently sold between forty and fifty thousand units every single week since it's debuted. It has sold more. Obviously, we've seen peaks, you know, over a hundred thousand and stuff like that. But reality is that it just doesn't seem to ever dip below 40,000, regardless of the lack of games or the games that do come out that aren't big hitters. So I'm, I'm just thrilled. I can't wait to see uh, where Switch sales grow from here. All I know is it's nice that we get these week-to-week numbers in Japan. I, I, wish, I wish the MPD or some other organization would provide week-to-week sales here in the United States and, and Canada and Mexico. It would be... Very interesting to see what week-to-week sales are in North America. Instead, now we don't even get sales numbers anymore, but yet in Japan we do. I, I wish this would be a thing. We even get numbers for the UK. It, it just would be nice if the United States and, and North America on the whole would just adapt a, a system that would allow us to uh, have these weekly sales. Anyways, uh, you guys let me know what you think about all these sales down in the comments below. I'm Nathaniel Rovajets from Nintendo Prime, and if you like this video, you know what to do. And if you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. Subscribe for more content, and I'll catch you in the next one.